When you got favor on your life, no matter what you thrown into, you're going to always rise to the top. I'm going to tell you something. You got to have a tremendous work ethic to be successful in here. In other words, and you can relate to this, you got to have a lot of dog in you. You really do, man, if you want to be successful because it's, it's going to be a lot of trying times. So you have to have a tremendous work ethic. But you got to have faith. Faith without works is dead. Albert Einstein said once, he said, imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. Now, I want you to get this now. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. Because if you think about it, Everything you have, everything we have in this world, somebody imagined it. It's your ma imagination is tremendous. Somebody was sitting on the phone one day talking with a cord to the wall and said, man, I wish I could just go outside with this phone. Everybody in here got a cell phone. Somebody imagined that. Somebody got tired of riding in a wagon cross country from slavery to freedom. Somebody said, I wish we had something that made these wheels move by themselves. We drive cars. People got tired of driving from New York to LA. Somebody said, I wish we could fly. We got airplanes. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. Your real life, the one God really got for you, is in your imagination. It is not in your current situation or your current paycheck. And if you've been living like that, you have then restricted yourself to a commonality that is really not yours. Because what really God got for you is really in your imagination. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So when I told you a minute ago, you got to have a tremendous work ethic, but you got to have a lot of faith. I talk to so many people who get older, like some of us are, and they've lost the faith. Well, faith is really simple. It's the, faith is the substance of things hoped for. All that means is in the beginning, you just hope something pop up. You know, you just kind of hope something happened for you. I was hoping I would get on TV. I wrote it on a piece of paper when I was 10. I want to be on TV. The problem I had when I wrote it at 10 was I suffered from a severe stuttering problem. I could not talk outside of my house. So can you imagine when I wrote on a piece of paper, I want to be on TV and turn that in. But when I wrote it on the paper, it wasn't factual. It was just hope. You just got to start with the hope. Faith is the substance of things that you hope for. You just hope something, Joe. Then what happened is through grace and favor, he give you a couple of them things you hope for, and then you're supposed to start believing then. Because now it turns into faith. But if you take the scripture, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What is the evidence of things not seen? I just told it to you. Albert Einstein said, imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. But guess what? Your imagination really is. It's the evidence of things not seen. Because your imagination, you know why it's the evidence of things not seen? Because you're the only one can see it. Your imagination is actually God showing you a preview of a coming attraction that he has for you. The moment you don't believe in your imagination, you negate what he got for you. Your imagination is the preview to life's coming attraction. It is the evidence of things not seen because can't nobody see it with you your problem is you keep telling your imagination to the wrong people see if you want to kill a big dream tell it to a small-minded person it's dead how many times man have you had a tremendous idea something you thought was the one and you went and told it to your loved ones and your so-called friends and they shot it down. I mean, you was convinced that it was just, oh man, I just came to you. And you told it to me and they shot it down. And you thought since they was your loved ones and their friends and they got your best interests at heart, you believed them. 
you was wrong. They taught you let them talk you out of what God got for you. Some of y'all still sitting here with the ambition of opening a business one day, but you scared to go start the business because you got a job and you got bills. Rich people got bills. You're going to let the fact that you got some bills stop you from opening the business, the thing that God done put in your imagination, so you're going to squash that because you got bills. Everybody got bills. Your real life is in your imagination. See, if you think you're too old to make it, let me give you a prime example. Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders has been frying chicken his whole life. He was telling everybody he had the best chicken in the world. Ain't nobody believe him. They turned him down everywhere. Colonel Sanders didn't get a franchise till he was in his 60s. Kentucky Fried Chicken sell more chicken than anybody in the world today. So if you're sitting there thinking because you got a little gray on you, and you're too late, as long as God waking you up in the morning, that's the sign that he ain't through with you. So what you tripping for? You sitting up in here like, like God can't do nothing for you because you 60. You have not because your ass not. Do you know the difference that that could make in your life. But you sit here and you take what you have and it could be so much more if you would ask. See, you have not cause you ask not. When the last time you really asked him for something? Or do you keep making requests that's inside the confines of your paycheck? When you gonna get outside of that? Didn't I just tell you God ain't in your paycheck? Didn't I just tell you he ain't in your job title? The life God got for you is in your imagination. Why you still imagine this stuff? Why you keep dreaming of a summer home? Why you keep dreaming of retirement? I do not live my life in the confines of what anybody says to me. I let my imagination go and my imagination is a preview to life's coming attraction. But what that really means is, is God showing you a preview of what he has for you. So now, if you have not cause you ask not, do you understand if you up your ask, he has to up his give? This period, this is simple stuff that anybody can apply, but you gotta ask for something. If you up your ask, he got to up his give, period. If you have not cause you ask not. How you can't get that from God? Yo, why cause you ain't asking? You keep asking him for stuff that fit in your paycheck. Your paycheck say a 2015 Lexus, so you go down there and ask him for that. And guess what you get? A 2015 Lexus. You up your ask, he up his gill. You have not cause you ask not. This ain't a magic trick, man. I have asked God for some tremendous stuff. Everything he hasn't given to me, is on the way. I have no doubt about it. Why would he not? But you gotta start the hustle. You gotta give God something to work with. Look, if you start hustling and grinding, he'll fill it up for you. But if you ain't got no hustle and no grind, he can't fill it up. Number one thing in your world is not your education. It's your dream. So what you dreaming about, y'all? What you still dreaming about? What is God still showing you in your imagination? What are you so afraid of? Why would you not take that leap and go for it before you mess around and die? Why would you not go and see what God really got for you before you leave this world? Why would you hang on to a job? If I was you before I leave this world, I go see what God really got for me.